Thank you.
Trance is over, the times are changing, it's the era of the new wave. The drought is over, the times are changing, it's the era of the new wave. The drought is over, the times are changing.
I said you will live yet. Yeah. Oh, bound up ministers said you will not live here as you came that is a word of prophecy is a word of assurance it is a declaration and so shall it be in Jesus name I want to tell you the song that I woke up with this morning that song they sang is confirming the song that God gave me as I was waking up from my sleep. What song was that? It was saying, is there anything that the Lord cannot do? How many know that song? Is there anything? Let one sister, or from the choir, one sister should take it up and let's sing it once. right away a couple of minutes ago as soon as we entered Ayetoro another song came up and that song is from Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 he gave us beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of holiness heaviness who knows how to sing it too Put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put up your voice to God. No, not that, not that, not, no. He gave us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is that right? You don't know that? Who knows it? Ah, all right, okay. 
Let me take it so that you... Let's read it from the Bible. Isaiah chapter 61. Verse... I take it from verse 1 through verse 3. It is at verse 3, part B, that the song lies. Isaiah 61. From verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the poor, unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. He gave us beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, he might be glorified. It was beautiful as she Oil of joy for morning, a garment of praise for the spirit of happiness, that we might be called trees of righteousness, a planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, he might be glorified. It was beautiful ashes. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now, I want to pray a short prayer, give a short message, and bless you so that those who are mourning will be rejoicing. You cannot remain the same after the message and after the program. Therefore, let us pray. Eternal Father, we bless you for your children that you brought together. It is a great privilege to come in contact with knowledge of the Lord at their stage. I wish I had such a privilege. But Lord, as I look at these young ones, I look forward and I see an explosion that is coming. Coming by the hand of young ones with a lot of vigor and vitality. Carrying the gospel and taking the gospel round about the world. And so, Lord, I am persuaded that this morning, come afternoon, you are going to rain your resources upon these children. You are going to give them a transformation that will make them unique. And then they will be able to stand as giants in the kingdom. Small in age, young in age, but mighty in spiritual stature. Small in size, young in age, but mighty in spiritual stature instruments in the hand of God that will thrash down mountains. Instruments in the house of God that will carry the blessings of heaven and bring upon the sons of men. Instruments in the hand of God to execute deliverance unto God's unto people and bring to subjection the powers of darkness. Therefore, as I teach little this morning, O oh God, come afternoon, give them understanding and meet them according to their needs, according to the calling upon their lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Timothy was of such when he came in contact with you, and you carried him through successfully. And Timothy came to become a bishop 
though he was so young in age. Therefore, I pray that your Holy Spirit, the divine one, will brood upon each and every youth here. Attend to each person specifically with definite, defined intention that none will go the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, energize them, quicken them, and let the healing power of your word come upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be a day of purification and impartation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Lord, for the answer. Now have your way and take all glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please be seated. I've been given an important topic to share with you, precious children. But the message is a message for everybody in the camp. Everybody in the camp needs this message. So it is not for the youths only, but for the adults, for the elders, for the workers, for those who came to supervise, for those who came to do one work or the other. The message is yours. So in the security unit, in the kitchen, once you can hear the voice of the preacher, you need to pay attention because it is God's word for all. The topic is arriving and residing at the pinnacle of glory. Arriving and residing at the pinnacle of glory. It is one thing to arrive and that thing to reside. Some people arrive at a point, but next moment they exit. And people of our age bracket readily arrive at places and then exit because of impatience or because of some discomfort or because of ignorance. So you see, youths attain some height, but next moment they fall out again. But God's will is that when you arrive at a place of honor, a place that is desirable, that you should retain that position. You should retain that level. He wants you rather to move from stage to stage. Keep on growing, never going down. And my texts for that message are Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8. Then Hebrew chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Hebrew chapter 5, verses 8 and 9 too. And Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. Starting with Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed, favored, fortunate are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I'm going to explain that verb, see. Now in Hebrews chapter number 8, chapter number 1, verses 8 and 9. Hebrews chapter number 1, verses 8 and 9. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. This is pertaining to Jesus Christ. It was prophesied in the book of Psalms. And then Paul, believed to be the writer of this, Mentioned it, quoted it. Talking about Jesus who loved righteousness and hated wickedness, iniquity, sin. As a result of that high love for what is right in the sight of God, 
and hatred for what God hates. God anointed him. God empowered him. God decorated him with his power more than every other human being that has existed. So he loved righteousness and righteousness is all about what is right in the sight of God. So he was given to doing what God wanted to be done. Now in chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, we are told about that Jesus again. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He are talking about Jesus again, giving us some insight about experiences that the Lord Jesus had. That he needed to even have some suffering brought his way. Some things that will not be very comfortable to bear, but they were permitted to come his way in order to make him actively obedient. Those difficult things that came, those unsavory things that came, made Jesus to become active in obedience so that he could now fulfill his ministry. And then in chapter 12, verse number 14, Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14, full of peace with all men and uh, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Here you get the verb again, see. The verb see here is the same verb used in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 as see. In 5, 8, Matthew 5, 8, he says, Blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart. Those that have a heart that does not have any corruption, does not have any admixture of impurity. The heart is just clean in God's sight. Blessed are those that have such a heart because they shall see God. Now here we are told, full of peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So it shows us a linkage between Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 and this Hebrew chapter 12 verse 14. Having a holy, having a pure heart goes together with holiness. The holy are the only ones that can see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That word see is a Greek word, optaomahi, optaomahi, and it has to do with gazing at something with eyes wide open, something that is spectacular. And anytime I remember that scripture, I want to remind you of the shooting star. If the night is very, is dark, and then you suddenly see the shooting star, it looks so amazing. The brightness is amazing. You want to watch it till it goes off. That is seeing, the kind of seeing meant here. So this seeing is not just in heaven. It is not just when you have died. Then you're going to see God. He is talking about from here where you are. Blessed are the pure in heart. But for they shall gaze at God. Full of peace with all men and holiness, without which no person can gaze at God. So there is a divine manifestation towards people that have a pure heart, towards people that are living holily. And that is what comes your way when you begin to lead a holy life, a life that heaven sees as truly holy. God will manifest himself to you. Yeah. 
as a youth, God is delighted. In fact, it is your age bracket that God wants to give attention to. Because you have a lot of resources that can be used for his kingdom. Satan likewise is also focusing at your age bracket because of the same reason. During the last national meeting we had, we said youth life very, very important. Satan looks for it and the heaven's kingdom of light is after that life. Because you have resources that can be used to propagate the kingdom. Now, if you can come to the status of being holy, a woman, a young lady, a young sister, a young brother that is of pure heart, God will reveal himself to you. You will gaze at God. And if somebody is gazing at God, if somebody has a revelation of God, how can that person consider? Think about depression. Think about throwing in the towel. Think about killing herself. Think about the things that are distracting you today. You know? How can a person that the Lord has revealed himself to begin to wonder what will happen to my future? Begin to fret and say, ah, nobody knows what is coming ahead. When the Lord reveals himself to you, you will come to be at the rest of the Lord. R-E-S-T. We are still going to talk about it. If you are in the rest of the Lord, there is no worry, no anxiety, no accommodation of fear, no accommodation of anything that looks tumultuous because you know the greatest being in the universe, in the whole universe. And you are a friend of that greatest being. Think about this. In Nigeria, we have the president of Nigeria. If anybody is a friend of that president and then is moving around, will he be afraid of any governor? You see those that have access to him live anyhow. Move around with confidence because they have access to the highest person in the country. So when God reveals himself to you and you come to know who is your God, there is no room again for worrying no matter what comes your way. There is no room for fear no matter what comes your way. The person will begin to lead a fulfilled life. And when you begin to live as God demands, you will find things putting themselves in order, things coming together and paving your way. So, arriving at and then residing at the pinnacle of glory is all about holiness of life. Once you embrace holiness of life, you have come to the rest of the Lord, and the Lord will begin to walk, make everything that comes your way fit in properly. No thing, nothing that he didn't permit can come across your way. There may be negative experiences, but they are all designed for improving your status in the kingdom. They will come and give way. None of them can stay a second beyond a time. Let me first of all define that top topic. Then we will look at details and conclude with decision expected. What does that topic mean? That topic arriving and residing at the pinnacle of glory has four key words. The first word is arriving. Second one is residing. Third one is pinnacle, and fourth word is glory. What does it mean to arrive? Arrive means to reach a place during a journey or come to a destination at the end of a journey. Reaching a place in the course of a journey or reaching the destination of that journey. 
So arrive has to do with the journey. And life is a journey. Christian life is a journey. Then reside has to do with to live or have one's home at a place. Live at a place or have one's home at that place. Especially when that dwelling there is permanent. To dwell at, to live at a place. To stay at a place, especially when it is permanent. Then it can be said, you reside there. That is where you reside. So arrive has to do with a journey and then coming to a point. Then reside has to do with dwelling at a point. Pinnacle simply means peak. A high point of achievement. Coming to the peak. Coming to a high point of achievement. And then glory is all about great honor and prestige obtained from the Lord. Glory in the context of our message is honor, prestige that the Lord brings to you. Honor, prestige, great one that the Lord brings to you. Honor from the Lord, prestige from the Lord to you. That's the glory. So talking about reaching a high point of divine honor, a high point of divine prestige, where you are recognized by heaven, where you are making impact. The heavens know you by name. The angels of God know you as one of the able representatives of that kingdom of heaven. You have come to a point where you are known and recognized. Think about Job. Job was known by heaven such that God at a point was bragging with Job. To Satan, have you considered my servant Job? God was boasting with Job. So coming to a point where the heavens will boast with you and boast about you. They are sure that that person is ours, belongs to us. Coming to that state and retaining that state or that status. Retaining it. Come to it and then you retain it. Though very young in age. Jesus had that status. At the age of 12, he was already mingling with doctors of law. And then by the time he began his ministry, that was the full-blown glory. John the Baptist had that glory too. In John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse number 35, he was a burning and a shining light. Where he was, he was bringing illumination to the place. Nobody could pretend that he or she did not know John, even though John wasn't educated. John chapter 5, verse number 35. Jesus was speaking about John, testifying about John. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So John was an exploding light. He was like an exploding star. Bright, the message, the administration, bringing conviction upon people. And the thing that we are happening, we are spreading everywhere. And people we are running towards where John was, from the places where they were. So John made impact. God's will is that you make impact in your generation. God's will is that you positively affect your generation. So, we are dealing with reaching and residing in the realm of divine honor. Reaching and residing in the realm of divine honor. Going to a point where God honors you and makes you honorable towards others. Youths to attain that height. But as I said, Many times you will find that those who attain it fall out of it again because of ignorance, because they didn't have a guide, 
or because of stubbornness. So we'll talk about that height and then how to reach it and how to abide the arena. Let's go to details. To come to the realm where you enjoy unceasing comfort of the Holy Ghost, which we call the rest of the Lord. To come to that point, the youth must have some substantial awareness of who he or she is dealing with. There must be some knowledge of who God is, substantial knowledge of whom you are following. If you must come to that level where he honors you. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, God said, I will honor them that honor me. But those that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. I will honor him that honors me. If you did not know who God is, you cannot give him appropriate honor. Honor is all about regard. Putting value on something. If you don't know the person of God, then you cannot give him that regard that is commensurate with his status. So, for a youth to come to a point where he honors you, puts you in a place of honor, you need to know who he is. Put value on him. In 1987, when I came to Lagos, looking for a place for housemanship, 1987, the difficulty of getting a place for housemanship made me somehow sorrowful. And then one evening, while alone at Lutz in the hostel there, I had come from the east wanting to get a job at Lutz there. And then there was a lot of this delay and, and have, what have you. Then in that hostel, I was just weeping, 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 crying the cry of self-pity. That I am a child of God and then I don't have a place to get my house worship. I was just crying to the Lord. And the Lord sent a rebuke to me. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, listen to what the pastor is saying. You see, I was crying, not to some other person, to God. But it was a cry of self-pity. Look at what is happening to me as a child of God. I remember my younger sister, who was also a child of God, having some problems. As I was crying and crying and crying, I heard the voice of the Lord. That was the first day I heard the audible voice of God. What did the Lord say to me? Ye worship, you know not who. You worship, but you don't know who you are worshiping. I was a child of God, crying out of self-pity, prayer of faithlessness. You are weeping. You are not calling upon God with faith. You are called upon God as one defeated. And he said, you worship. You know not who you worship. Initially, when it sounded the first time, I thought that it wasn't, I didn't hear it well. I continued in the cry, and then the voice went through my loud cry and shouted it, you worship, you know not who. I stopped. I cleaned my eyes and thought that within two weeks, I will get the job I was looking for. This happened around July, June, July, August of 1987. But till December, the job didn't come. And then, December that year, he whispered to me and said, go to Kano. I was looking for a job in Lagos. He said, go to Kano. By January 1988, I went to Kano. I have never been to Kano before. Never knew anybody in Kano. After two months and a half, he now showed me it is Kaduna. From Kano, I went to Kaduna. Kano 
there were watchman brethren there, and I was enjoying the place. And I said, go to Kaduna. When I went to Kaduna, there was no watchman. And there, there was no person to help me. And it was there that I got a job. And within two weeks of getting that job, I discovered that a watchman had just been born in one of the towns in Kaduna. And God used me to establish that church. <laughs> Having come from Lagos, being taught by the GS, the vision of the watchman was known. So by the time I went to a place where there was nobody that knew the vision, apart from one sister, the wife of a soldier that was transferred, who began it. So I was now like the acting pastor of the new church, telling them what to do. Remember, I wanted a job in Lagos, but the Lord took me to Kaduna. That was what he was saying. You worship, you don't know what. When you come to this level we are talking about, we are by holiness of life is your way. You will know that anything that pertains to you is well known by God. And the Lord has the best for you. So if what you are looking for didn't work, you are not going to worry about it. You are wanting to know, Lord, what do I do? Arriving at a place where heavens honor you. Now let's see the details. In John chapter 4, verse number 22. John chapter 4, verse 22. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. That was the statement Jesus made to the Samaritan woman. Who was talking about where they should worship. He said, you Samaritans don't know who you are worshiping. We, the Jews, are the ones that know the way of the Lord. So that was the word the Lord used for me when I was ignorantly crying because what I was looking for was apparently being delayed. Now, in Hebrews chapter 4, you must have a substantial awareness of who you are dealing with. Have awareness of the greatness of God. That God that you have decided to serve and worship knows the end from the beginning. Has the power to do all things. Carries you and knows how you are going to go through every obstacle in life. He has it. When that awareness comes, then you have come to a place of rest. In Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 9. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Labor, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. I stop there. Let's labor to enter into the rest of God. He that enters into the rest of God has seized from his own work. He doesn't struggle again. She is not struggling again to please God. Finds grace in abundance, enabling him, enabling her to do what God demands. That is the rest of God. And that is where God wants to bring you to. And God will bring you to that position today in the name of Jesus Christ. The Israelites were brought out of Egypt. Their rest was supposed to be Canaan land. But many of them did not reach that Canaan land because they didn't know, they didn't appreciate the God that brought them out. So you find that most of them died in the wilderness. They left Egypt to go to the land flowing with milk and honey, but didn't reach because they didn't really know the God that brought them out. That was why they were murmuring. 
when things became bad. Instead of praying with faith or asking Moses with faith, they were complaining bitterly. And so God said they were not qualified to reach there. So somebody can be born again and lost again. But God's will is that you get born again, you know the God whom you are serving, and then you submit to him to bring you to the level where you are no longer struggling to live. So let's take a look at the life of Jesus. That is a life of somebody that knew the Lord. That is the life of somebody that enjoyed the rest of the Lord. That is the life of somebody that the heavens honored. The heavens honored him. Look at how miracles followed him. Look at how he did things that have not been done. Walking upon the sea. Providing food, multiplying food. Calling the dead to come out with ease. Not with 20-hour prayer, with ease. But applying food with ease. He's, whenever he spoke, the heavens confirms his word. That is a man under honor. But it not miracles that made him that man of honor. It was his life. It wasn't the miracles that made him the man of honor. It was his life. He gave himself over to living for the Father. John's Gospel chapter 8. And so the Father likewise turned around to make for manifestations that people will see and put value on him. John chapter 8. From verse number 46. John chapter 8. Verse 46, which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He was challenging the Jews. Which of you can accuse me successfully of a sin that I have committed? Which of you can correctly point a sin accusing me that I committed? Which of you? He led a life free of sin. Verse 29 of that same chapter. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Why? Because I do those things that please him. So, he was given to pleasing the Father. And if you please the Father, the Father will always be there to give attention to things that pertain to you. And to please the Father is to stay free of sin. Keep away from those things he said you shouldn't do. And seek to make him happy. That was Jesus. So, Jesus taught people to Go for holiness of life. And then he lived also a holy life. Many times when people hear of holiness, they become afraid. Don't talk about holiness. But holiness is all about staying away from sin to please God. Doing those things that God wants you to do. So in chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 48, he says, Be ye perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. Be ye morally matured, morally okay, as your father is morally perfect. So as a youth, you can be morally perfect, doing right and never doing the wrong. Never choosing what is wrong. Now, the journey to that state of pleasing God the journey to that state of doing what is right in God's sight always. That journey begins with consecration. Can I hear somebody say consecration? Consecration. That word consecration simply means dedication. So it begins with 
dedication. Let me hear you say dedication. What is dedication? It simply means one setting himself apart for God. You decide to become really God's own. After you are born again, after the day you gave your life to Christ, there is the need for you to willingly and willfully declare to the Lord that I have become your own. And the same thing, you will let people know that you have become God's own, the one that belongs to Jesus. After you are born again. So in this meeting, you gave your life to Christ, you have to take this second step of saying, Lord, I want to be your own for the rest of my life. I want you to lead me. Look up, my brothers and sisters, young ones. You cannot lose anything by living for God. The things you can lose are things that don't have value. Things that instead of helping you, we rather destroy you. Those are the things you lose. But you cannot lose any good thing by separating yourself unto the Lord. And it is commanded that once you give your life to Christ, you should take the next step, the step of separating yourself unto the Lord. In Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look up, please. He said, Paul was writing to the brethren, people who were born again in Rome. He said, I urge you, I plead with you, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, like a sacrifice at the altar of God. But your own is that you have life in you. A sacrifice at the altar of God. When the, brought, uh, when the sacrifice is brought to the altar, that sacrifice never exits from the altar when fire is put under. The sacrifice is on the altar and then the fire consumes it and the aroma goes to God. That was the picture. You bring yourself to the Lord without reservation, without any conditionalities attached. Lord, I bring myself to you. Use me as you wish. Use me, Lord, as you want. I present myself. And such a person will begin to consume the word of God, to know what God likes, what God will have him do, and what he would have him or her do. So as the person is taking the word of God, Meditating on the word of God, their mind is changing. What you used to hold on to that we are contrary, God's word will begin to remove them from you. Before you know it, your thinking changes. Yeah, you will begin to have ideas that God is giving you about life, what you can achieve. Like in the last ministration, where you are talked about Nehemiah. With one hand, they held the weapon. With one hand, they were doing work. Even the weapon you want to hold, God will also affect it so that you can have the appropriate weapon. Your profession will be appropriate so that you can serve him as he wants you to serve him. Consecration, dedication. It is not just a one-day event. It is something that you will regularly do to remind yourself that you belong to God and to tell the Lord that I reaffirm my commitment to following you. 
I reaffirm my determination to remain your child, to remain your servant. Whilst you are doing that, awareness is dawning on you about the God you are identifying with. He will begin to work knowledge in you. Knowledge about him in you. Knowledge about what he likes. Those things will be increasing. The more you consecrate, the more you come to know whom you are working with. As you are doing that, a step has been taken that will be progressing you in holiness of life. As you are reading the word of God, the word of God is making you holier, sanctifying you, purifying you. Sometimes you read the scripture and that scripture will convict you of something that you have been doing. You repent about it and you have learned that your life is improving. That is what is called gradual Christian maturity. As you consecrate and begin to eat the word of God, read the Bible, do exercises, pray, have vigil, you are being purified, you are being sanctified, you are being enriched spiritually. But I will not close without telling you about an experience that theologians tell us about. It is called sanctification experience. That experience will make coming to this level of honor much more easy. Sanctification experience. And what is it all about? An experience is an encounter. An event that took place that you can readily remember. That is an event experience. Event that you encountered that took place in your life that you can readily remember. So that thing is an experience. Salvation is an experience. In salvation, the Holy Ghost comes, convicts you of sin. As you repent, your sins are forgiven. Next thing, you begin to feel the awareness that you're a child of God. Many times, you will feel joy within you. Joy of salvation. Those are things that follow salvation experience. Now, sanctification experience is a second definite touch in which the Holy Ghost will touch your soul. S-O-U-L. You are made up of a spirit man, inside, inside. A soul, the realm of your mental faculties, feeling, thinking, desire, wish, choice making, and affection. All of them are encapsulated in the soul. And then, outwardly, we have your physical body. It is your physical body that we see. Invisible are the soul and the spirit. The soul and the spirit are so bound together that it is difficult to differentiate them, yet they are different. The soul is a realm connecting the spirit and the physical body. It is from the soul that the spirit man transmits information to the physical body. So, that soul is where the Holy Ghost will walk on the individual to remove the impurities of that soul. So that that soul is holy, is pure. And when it is pure, there is no negative thought residing. There is no toxic emotion residing. No anger. Hatred, bitterness, offenses, envy, jealousy, fear, doubt. All these that I've mentioned are toxic. They are poisonous. It is in the soul that they reside in. When this touch of the Holy Ghost comes upon that child of God, the Holy Ghost will break the yoke of the old man that is responsible for all those toxic thoughts. Toxic emotions breaks out the yoke and flushes them out. 
or put the old man as it were and what will be in your heart will be free pure heart and such a heart is a heart that God will reveal himself to that's the person that will see God and that is the heart that you should seek and pray for today a heart that has been purified Paul writing to the Thessalonians prayed that they will have this purity of the soul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 reading verse 23 and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your whole spirit, soul, and the physical body be separated unto God. The physical body is separated at consecration or dedication. You are the one that will do that by the help of the Lord. You are the one that will decide that this, my body, will be given over to the Lord. I will not get myself involved in anything that does not give glory to God. So, you will stop going to all those parties and the things that unbelievers do that don't give glory to God. You don't want to associate with them. You don't put on all those sins the people of the world put on to decorate themselves and show that they belong. All those hairstyle. And you as youths today, as youths who are brothers, you see many people loving to put on beards and loving to put on uh, sideburns and mustache so that they can be like men when they are walking. Oh boy, how now? He said, now, no, no problem. All those things. Those things, the people who are not born again, the things that excite them, you want to disconnect yourself from them. You want to be that when you are seen, they see you as a Christian. You take a decision. When somebody sees me, they will say me as a Christian, not as a boy or boy, not as somebody that is pleasing the world, whose taste is like the people who are not born again. You want to be a person different from others. That is a decision you do. And that makes you separate yourself unto God. Your body is sanctified. The sister will not accept attachment. Even the one they say Christian attachment. They call it uh, Christian, what they call it? Christian wool, eh? Christian attachment. Satan gives, gives you a good name, Christian own. What are they looking for? The beauty of the marine world. Beauty of the marine world. That is what they want you to look like. A child of God says, no, I won't put all those dirty things upon myself. Have you ever gone for deliverance or you see where they are doing deliverance and you will find, look up and listen. The devil will begin to say, she had my property. She had my property. And the deliverance minister will ask her, what is the property? What is the property? He said, look at her hair. Then you remove the scarf of the sister and you see attachment there. Attachment. That's my property. Many times people don't know what is going on in the spirit realm. Many of you young sisters don't know what is going on there. The makeups you use, the, the bangles, the, 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 the chains, some of the creams and perfumes, some of them are from the waters. Some of them. And look at, listen, let me tell you something. Because if you don't understand these devils, they will be laughing. They will tell you that person is a prophetess. That one there, he's a man of God, he's a woman of God. But you will not know that there are some people that are called women of God that are agents of hell. They are doing wonders. When they are talking, everybody listens. They can write books.
books and write books. Books that look interesting and people are reading. But people don't know that they are daughters of Jezebel. Don't you know that in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, Jesus pointed out Jezebel, who was in the church prophesying and seducing God's servants. To seduce means to deceive. Because she will say, thus says the Lord. The next thing, she will bring a doctrine that will be contradictory to what Jesus wants. And they say, ah, the woman of God has said, and they were doing it. Jesus says, let her be unveiled because I'm going to kill her. There are many things you don't understand and you don't know. In the spirit realm, there is false religion, false Christianity in the spirit realm that they present, and that is what is happening in many places. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, first, it says, In the latter time, storm shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Some shall depart from the faith that was preached originally, giving heed to seducing spirits, deceptive spirits, devils that will act like angels of God, who will be presenting some teachings, teachings that look nice, but they are from the devil to deceive. So to sanctify yourself, you decide that I will not put my hand into any of those things that God will not be happy with. That is your own decision. I will not wear all those things people in the world wear and get excited. I will dress decently. I will dress modestly. I will be such a person that nobody can can say my attire. I will not be an instrument of offense to any other person. So you check your clothes and you ensure that the clothes you wear are clean, decent, okay. Nobody can speak evil of them. Any clothes that suggests to somebody that you want immorality, you throw that away. Any cloth that exposes your delicate past, you throw that away. Or adjust it so that it doesn't show. All the clothes that are tight, all those tight clothes that will all show your contour. As a young lady, you take away those clothes. They belong to the prostitutes. They are called the garment of the whore. W-H-O-R-E. You don't you are not a sex worker. Whores have to wear that to seduce men. So with that, your body is sanctified. Now you set yourself up to the Lord to purify your heart. Purification of the heart is the major thing. That is where you submit to the Holy Ghost to remove those impurities from your heart. In Isaiah chapter number 6, Isaiah chapter 6, it tells us of a prophet, prophet of God, that God needed to give a second touch. This second touch led to him being a real man of God, recognized by heaven, able to stand for heaven. First, Isaiah chapter 6, let's take verse from verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah has been a prophet, criticizing sinners, rebuking sinners. But a day came that God revealed himself to Isaiah by 
by showing him how the seraphims in heaven we are worshiping. And the seraphims we are with one voice shouting, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy, holy. With that declaration, the place was vibrating. The aura, the glory of that revelation arrested the prophet. He said, who am I to be a representative of this holy God? He said, no, I am a man of unclean lips, dwelling in the midst of a people of unclean lips. In other words, my very self and the Israelites that are rebellious, we are the same. I am no better than them. I am not fit to be a representative of this God. I am not fit. He became convicted. That conviction was also a kind of prayer, saying, Lord, I am finished. Then, next thing, verse 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a life call in his hand, which he had taken from the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. With this demonstration, figurative touch, your sin has been purged. Your iniquity has been taken away. Your guilt has been removed. That was what the angel told the prophet. An awareness dawned on him that God has treated his heart. Because all this while he was prophesying, but there were still impurities. His words we are rough, maybe. Somebody has done wrong. And then the way you are criticizing the sinner becomes wrong in God's sight. That was remember unclean lips. Somebody can be preaching. And then see somebody who has done wrong. In the course of preaching, begins to curse the person. That is unclean lips. That was how the prophet saw himself. But with this act of the angel, an awareness came that the heart has been cleansed. And then God said, who shall go for us? He said, here am I. No more condemnation. When this experience comes, there will no longer be any guilt in the heart. No more condemnation. And this is what you need now. Because after this, he was raised up in ministry to begin to bring a kind of message that he never carried before. A message of judgment. So, we are talking about purity of heart. God touching your soul to remove the old man that is in you. To break the power of the old man. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 3, we are told that Adam had his son in his image. Adam, who was fallen, had set and set to that image of fallen Adam. And ever since, all human beings carry that image. It is that image that is responsible for you. After you are born again, you may find yourself doing things that are not right again. And then you are just saying, these things I'm doing, I shouldn't do them. This anger, this offense, this manifestation of violence shouldn't be. It, those things are called besetting sins. Sins that beset you. It is the old man in you responsible for those besetting sins. Talking much. After talking, you say, but I've spoken too much. I shouldn't talk too much. You see yourself getting into confrontation when you're supposed to be meek and mild. All those are manifestations of the old man. It happened in the life of Apostle Paul. In Romans chapter 7, quickly, quickly, quickly. Romans chapter 7. And uh, from verse number 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. 
But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I desire to do good, but I find myself doing what I shouldn't do. It is not that the person will think of evil and go to do evil, but he finds himself falling, faltering. He decides that as I go to a class today, I will not get into any gossip. She decides that, but entering, entering the class, one of the friends came around and began to talk, and she found herself joining in the talking. And then they will say something against somebody. After that, her spirit will convict her and condemn her. You shouldn't have said this sin. And she begins to say, Lord, I'm sorry. It is called besetting sin. Somebody will tell the other one, shut up. And push the brother. Or push the other person who offended him. And then he remembered as a child of God, I shouldn't do this. He repents about it. Tomorrow, the same thing repeats. That is what happens to the man, the boy, the youth that has not got this second touch. And that is what the youth should ask God for today. Give me a second touch so that I can do always what pleases you. I can do what pleases you always. That is where the Holy Ghost will go to your soul and remove the impurities there. And when they are removed, lost in, lost in, in your body, you are lost in, for the opposites will never come up again. Hatred in the mind will never come up again. People that say they are masturbating, such a thing can't come near you again because the heart is pure. No envy. Envy somebody because the person has something you don't have. Such cannot happen again. No jealousy. Competitive spirits. I want to show him that I know also. All those kind of ungodly competition, unhealthy competition, we give way when the heart is purified. Because it is from a heart that is polluted that you see unhealthy competition, ungodliness. So you carry a heart that is pure. That is a heart that the Lord will reveal himself to. But it is the Lord that does the work. But before he does the work, you must come to the awareness that you need his assistance. You must have the awareness that you need God to help you. Isaiah had to recognize it and said, I am a man of unclean lips. All the while he did recognize it. And as he recognized it, then came the Lord's attention. An angel was sent and symbolically healed him, cleansed him, sanctified him. Now you look inwards, check in your heart. Check your heart. Is your heart free or you find some of these bad, bad thoughts coming in your heart? You find hatred in your heart? You find envy in your heart? You see yourself being jealous of some other person? Or you find yourself not wanting to talk to somebody, being in enmity with somebody? Or you find yourself being a chatterer, always talking and talking and talking. All those activities of the flesh show that your heart needs a second touch. The young ones that their parents were sent on errand, they say, don't send me, and they will insult their parents. Even if your parents are not born again, you don't insult them. Your parents are your parents. You honor your parents. Those ones that see us are rude. Their mouths are very bad. It is because of lack of sanctification. If they are born again. You love fashion. 
And when you see people, we are close. It begins to thrill you. Fashion, fashion, fashion. Even though you have enough, you must buy some new one. Because that is the relatives. It is because of love of the world. When sanctification takes place, there will be no love of the world. No love of the world. Some people enter university. Youth, are you listening to me? When they enter university, they become crazy. They are now free from the yoke of their parents. And then they grow wild. Why? They were born again no, before they went to university. But because they were not sanctified, the devil gave them the apple, dirty apple. In 1981, i tell you a story in a few minutes, I round off. I entered the university in 1981. I wasn't born again. But there were two boys who were also my friends, who were born again. They attended Federal Government College, Kaduna. So, we attended Port Court. So, Fegoko, you know, you pray in Tate. So, some people, you know them. But, unfortunate thing there was, look up and listen, brethren, important. They were born again in the college when they were in secondary school. But, on coming into the campus, they threw away their salvation. One of them became an addict in smoking that they used to tag him with the smoker. Call his name and call his name and say, the smoker. He was now smoking, free, free from parental control. But do you know the sad thing? Why I can't forget them is that those two boys died in the long, vac long vacation of that first year. Both of them. One of them died from hepatitis. The other one died from an accident. I wasn't born again then, but I remember their picture. When I now got born again, I saw how these two young ones threw away their salvation. How they have stepped into eternity without hope. Hopelessly. And eternity has no end. Young ones wanting to enter the campus know that eternity is endless. If you miss it and you step in without hope, you are lost forever. And there is nothing like God saying, oh, you are just 18 years, you are just 19 years, you will not go to hell. Once you have come to the age of accountability, knowing right and wrong, you will be judged. Don't enter the campus and throw away your salvation. If you have sanctification experience, you cannot throw away your salvation. So this day, you are going to tell the Lord to give you that second touch. You want that touch that will keep you in the rest of the Lord. We are, you are enjoying the grace of the Lord. And it is that second touch that paved the way for baptism of power. We are the Lord will now come to exact his power in you and make you a very useful instrument in his hand. Our Lord Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, his God, anointed him with power, oil of gladness, above fellow preachers, above fellow prophets, above fellow men of God. No human being has the action he had. It is this cleansing of your soul. And as a sister, Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will remain a servant of God. There is no female Holy Ghost and God can use you to do exploits. As a brother, young in age, but giving over to the Lord, God can so much decorate you with his power that you, your presence anywhere will change the atmosphere. There is no Holy Ghost for young ones that is different. The same power of God. And, and uh, Timothy enjoyed the power of the Holy Ghost. When you are sanctified, how do you retain sanctification experience? It is by being cautious of what you have received. 
not toying with it. And how do you retain it then? Continuity in the exercises you do. Reading the Bible, praying the scriptures, and consciously refusing to yield to any temptation wanting you to go the way of the flesh. When you begin to live a holy life, the spirit of holiness is working in you. God will be guiding you through voices, through impressions in the mind, through dissuasions. You wanted to do something, but you get a dissuasion. Don't do that. He begins to move you so that you can be a perfect servant of his. You have paved the way for him to come in because you allowed him to cleanse your soul. Temptations will still come, but the grace to say no will just be there. Don't compromise. Don't join people to do what they, everybody is doing, which your spirit is saying no to. Don't join them. Stay faithful. Stay dependable, reliable. As you are doing those exercises, you are seeing yourself as having not yet arrived. Blessed are those people that hunger and thirst after righteousness. So, return a quest for righteousness. As you do so, you identify with people of like mind. Friendship must change to be with people of like mind. People that you see are conscious of pleasing God. Those are the ones that should be your friend. If you mingle with such, you will not readily lose what God has given you. So, the road to this realm of glory, whereby your heart is pure, and the presence of God is working in you, that road is through awareness of your need, that you lack that sanctification experience, and then you ask God to purge your heart of that, of that old man so that you can be sanctified. Having determined that I'm not going to go the way of the flesh again. I will not be a lover of the world again. I want to be a pleaser of Christ. Once that is done, that child of God will enter the next realm because it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And sanctification experience is a kingdom experience that God wants to give you. As many as desire to have that purification, let them rise up now and let us pray. You want that purification? Tell the Lord, as Isaiah cried out, saying that I am a man of unclean lips, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Tell the Lord that you need him. You need the removal of the old man from your life. You need a second touch. Let him give you a second touch. Let him give you a second touch. You are born again, and you want a second touch. Even if you are not yet born again, you can tell the Lord you need salvation and sanctification together. You want to represent him well. You want everything about sin to be removed from you. God is capable of giving you both experiences at the same time. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. For they shall have a revelation of God. The inborn depravity, the original sin working in your life, needs to be broken off by the power of the Lord, by the power of the spirit of holiness.
Obeying God's word, we keep what you have received. Participating in spiritual exercises will boost what you have received. You will grow from level to level. Challenges may come, but those challenges will better your life. They will improve you as you follow the demands of the scriptures. The Lord Jesus learned active obedience by the things he suffered. God allowed some suffering that made him better, actively obedient. Purify my heart tonight. Purify my heart this afternoon, the child of God should be saying. Break the power of the old man. The old man that lost the world. The old man that is fashion conscious. Who is after how to appear? Old man. Old man that is looking for artificial, artificial decorations to look like the people of the world. All the attachment, wool attachment, all of them belong to the world. Beauty things, beauty facilities. Artificial eyelids. All of them, so that when the woman puts it around her eyelids, they, she becomes charming. Men will begin to look at her. All of them are from the wall, from the water for the people of the world. God wants to make great servants of his out of these youths. But the youth must not love the world. Must not go after the taste of the world. The youth that God wants to use are youths that want to identify with his kingdom. Who want to be unique, different from others. Who don't want to please the world, but wants to please God, wants to please heaven. Jesus said, my father has not left me alone because I always do those things that please him. Do those things that please him. Touch me with your hands, O oh Lord. Touch me with your hands. Let the Lord touch you with his hands now. I don't want to go the way I came. I don't want to go the way I came, Lord. Touch me with your hand. Give me sanctification experience. The power of holy living. The grace for holiness of life. Divine influence will come upon you, enabling you to do what God wants you to do always. No place for being sad and then becoming depressed. No place for throwing in the towel for the sanctified. It is forward ever, backwards never. Agent of change you want to be. Agent of change. That is a way to that divine agency. You must be different from others before you can change them. You must show God that you have value for him. For him to give you what others don't have. For him to give you what others don't have. You must show that you have what they don't have by following him. Being totally attached to him.
Agent of change I want to be. Agent of change I want to be. Bringing joyful moments into the life of everyone. Bringing joyful moments into the life of everyone. This is the root to the, being an agent of change. Purification of the heart. Thank you, great father. Thank you, almighty God. Heavenly Redeemer. Heavenly Redeemer. We give you praise and glory. The Holy God. The Holy God. The Holy God. That the seraphims always adore. Declaring holy. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Palu Shereba Santa Beca Prezia. Makete do Rosia Mantena Viaconda. Ke Prezia Tema Prezia. Holy Father, here are your children. Let them have a measure of your being. Let them have a measure of your holiness. Let there be a transformation. Let there be an uprooting of the old man. Let the Lord do that which he alone can do. That there may be whom there should be. Purify their hearts. Let the spirit of holiness rest upon them. Purify their hearts by your spirit. And let the spirit of holiness rest upon them. And let them see a drastic change and superlative grace functioning in their lives. From this moment, from this moment, from this moment, blessed Father. Agent of change they want to be. Agent of change they want to do. Those that have been stubborn, let your power break that stubbornness. Break it off. Break off the heart that is stony and give the heart of flesh. Yeah. Give the heart of flesh. Let there be metamorphosis. Divine metamorphosis taking place in the soul. Paco shall your press your tama. Sanctify, purify, separate their souls unto you. Let them become alienated to the world, alienated to the things of this world. Let there be an exaltation of heart unto holiness, unto the love of God. Love of God, love of God coming into their hearts. Bubbling, growing, magnified in their hearts. Thank you. For in the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed. Thank you, Lord. Begin to round off your prayers now. Thanksgiving and on all power and might be unto our God forever.
Just as I pray, Paskia, place one hand on your chest as I pray for you. You are worthy, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You are worthy. worthy. You are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. Holy, holy.
Yahweh Lord, have Yahweh Lord, have Yahweh Lord, in this young ones, as I lift my hand before you, as a token of my love, have Yahweh plant you have not planted must be rooted out Lord every heart heart must be transformed the certain sins must be taken away right now my father have your way Lord in this young ones it is your will that this Precious young ones, sir, receive a second torch that we meant for your power for effective service administration. It is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Is your very word, O oh master. And these young ones are available and are saying, Sanctify, sanctify. I want to be an instrument uh, effective uh, in your hands. Uh, give me grace to follow. I therefore ask that that hand of God, finger of holiness, be released to touch everyone. Touch everyone. And break the yoke of the old man in Jesus' name. Sharing here, Luva. It is the doing of the Lord. It is the working of the Spirit of God. It is not by power or might, and it is by faith. And I have the faith that the Lord desires. So do this in this youth for the administrations you get this morning with your things are possible and that you want to make them trees of righteousness oaks giant trees of righteousness therefore let the conversion experience take place right away and let them grow like the oaks of righteousness in Jesus' name. Fire of sanctification. Take over. Cleanse. Watch. And leave golden hearts of holiness. Golden hearts of holiness. Hearts yearning for more of God. Hearts yearning for truth. As yet for service in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, blessed Lord. Glory be to your holy name for the purification exercise, for the breakage of the yoke of the old man, and for the impartation of superabundant grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Every infirmity, sickness on the body, die in the name of Jesus. Every habit, negative, be that flushed out in the name of Jesus. Let the nature of God grow. Faith, confidence in the Lord. Awareness about God in the name of Jesus. All those that don't have hopes, the hope springs up now. In Jesus' name, your future is great. Your future is bright. Great and bright future. You may seem hopeless now, but surely you see hope everywhere. Manifestations of God going in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
glory be to him who dwells on high. The master strategist who is the most high enabler that picks the poor out of the dungeon and establishes him on the table of the royals. Have your way and uh, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Open your mouth and thank the Lord.